Welcome! Welcome. Welcome. Three tones to choose from. Which tone do you like best? The real high one? The middle one? Or this one down here? That's right. We cater to all the three types of people. On this show... What show are you talking about? You, that's you talking to me? Oh, oh. Extra flourish is going on over there. I don't know what's happening. Hi. Hi, everybody. What a treat it is to be here once again with you listening to me wherever you are. Hey, hey, hey. Do you ever trip out on the fact that we're in two different places? And we are existing in different... <laughs> you know, can I tell you something? That piano music is freaking me out. <laughs> it was just ascending, ascending, ascending. And I started to get nervous. <laughs> but like... Okay, but seriously, guys. I'm here now. But you're there then. At least that's my perspective on things. Because I'm here where I am now. I'm in the past. Even, even if this show weren't recorded so far in advance, this would be in the past. Here's the thing no one ever likes to talk about. I might be dead by the time you hear this. That's just a weird fact. I hope I'm not. I'm not trying to... This is not some weird cryptic thing that I'm trying to do. Let me put my cards on the table. I don't want to be dead by the time you're hearing this. And that goes for anyone who's hearing this 50 years from now. I want to still be alive. Guys, I don't want to die. I don't know if I want to live forever because who knows what that's like. And I might get, if I make some weird deal where I do live forever and then it's ironic and it turns out that's not a great thing. I'm not, I'm not saying that. So any Twilight Zone genies or whatever out there, I'm not saying I want to live forever. But I want to live an inordinately long amount of time. Like, I wouldn't mind taking a run at 200. That's reasonable, right? That's two lifespans in modern times. But... Things are already not looking so good health-wise. I don't know how that's going to be once I hit. Once I hit, I don't, look, I'm afraid of 70. That's going to be rough. So imagine being 170 and you're like, ugh, 30 more years of this? I can't do anything. I can't walk upstairs alone or in pairs. Yeah, I'm a slinky. Did you not know? Did you not know I was a sentient slinky this whole time? Why am I worried so much about aging? I'm just an old coiled spring. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoy my play. The slinky that came to life and to dinner. That's the title. Some people say that that title is clunky. And they say at least it needs parentheses. And I'm like, nope, people will get it. You got to trust your audience. The slinky who came to life and then to dinner. <laughs> and then there's a scene where I, as the slinky, I'm trying to eat, but the food just keeps going through my coils. And it's a damned mess. Why do they serve spaghetti? The worst food to serve a slinky. It strikes me now that I don't know if they still make slinkies. And this might not make a sense. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that spaghetti. Also, I haven't eaten. And I'm starving to death. Perfect time to get creative. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneation <laughs> with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I sit down with a special guest. We have a chat. And then I invite some improviser pals to make up a fun story with me. And it is all scored on piano by that guy over there, Mr. Eben Schletter. <laughs> that, no, don't. Don't. Why would you do it? Okay, thank you. Now I feel safer. Back on solid piano ground. 
That is a film that I'm going to make starring Kevin Costner. <laughs> Solid Piano Ground. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you my special guest today. This actor I have known for a handful of years now. We've worked together a handful of times. One time for every year. <laughs> One time she told me a terrifying ghost story that I've never forgotten. <laughs> We will not have time to talk about it today. Too bad. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Spontaneous Nation. Natalie Morales. Natalie, hello. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Natalie, right off the bat, you have a new show. What is it called? The Grinder. The Grin. <laughs> now, is that the official pronunciation? Because I've been seeing the billboards and I've been calling it The Grinder. Yeah, it's The Grinder. It's The Grinder. I mean, that's... Is it the... Hmm. Is this the first time you're saying it out loud? It might be. Yeah. I was only reading it this whole time. I think it's the grinder. Oh. If you think that it's the grinder, perhaps you've been misled by it, your eyes. Isn't grinder like a gay sex app? <laughs> Why would they name it that? I was like, all right, That's this not is for his me nickname, to, I, the I, grinder. I think they're trying to get maybe a secondary audience that uh, people are overlooking. Pe people who like the grind? People who like indiscriminate. Sex. Right. With strangers. Right. Or friends. Yeah. Hey, maybe you can find your friends on Grinder. But only men. But only men. Yes. Is there a lady Grinder? I don't believe there is. Maybe there is. <laughs> that sounded like I was inquiring as to yeah. the marital status of the Grinder. <laughs> and is there a lady Grinder? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's by the time this airs should have already happened and hopefully it has not been canceled. Fingers crossed. Yes, they are. Applesauced. Ellie, I have a question for you. Yes, Paul. This is from our previous guest. Okay. Oh, gosh. That guest asks, <clears throat> what's one thing that everyone in the United States can agree on? Oh. <laughs> easy question. Is it? Is uh, it, <laughs> it is, an easy it's question? not at all. I, mean, I think it's not personal. I think it's an insane question. It's not personal in Which any I way. like. Yeah. Uh, uh, huh. What's one thing that everyone in the United States can agree on? There's got to be something, right? I mean... I would I would go for the safe answer, which is like some historical event happened. So everyone can agree that some historical event happened. Sure. But there are those few people who believe that those things didn't happen. Like a moon landing, for Correct. instance. Correct, yeah. There are people that say that didn't happen. Yeah. I don't understand what anyone gained out of faking the moon landing if they faked it. Well, the idea is that they, they gained the uh, battle with uh, Russia for right. who, who – yeah. So, For there, who? so there is a motivation. <laughs> so the motivation was we're going to pretend we got to the moon first. So in your face, Russia. Right. It was. It was. That was the. That was the text. There was the subtext of like we are the more powerful country. I don't right. believe the moon landing happened. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. There. I mean, there was wind on the moon. Come on. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Let me. Let me ask you this, though. And here's why I don't believe the moon landing was faked. Okay. First of all, I'm a rational human being. Sure. Secondly, yeah. um, the special effects of the day were terrible. Correct. So I think that moon landing footage looks pretty good. Like it sold but, me. But does it? Let's, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Sure. Just for Abs sake of a conversation. Absolutely. Because whoever the last guest was didn't provide a very interesting question. Anyway. <laughs> oh, no. well, we don't like that kind I'm of talk here. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. I, I need to elaborate oh. to, to, you know, to fill time. Um, you, don't, you don't have to, I'm way. going to because I want to talk. Um, <laughs> There's no time maximum for this. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, devil's advocate to the moon landing looking fake, right? Mm. You're saying it looked pretty good. And I was like, but what special effects? I mean, there's no CGI. There's a, it's dark. There's a guy in an astronaut outfit, which yeah. they had, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's then there's a flag. <laughs> there's a flag. It's nighttime. We can see the moon. <laughs> yeah, there's a flag. And uh, and the ground is dusty. And like, so like, that's not hard to do. The moon does not glow like we see it glow. Uh, mm -hmm. and there is wind on the moon that is moving the flag. Supposedly, there's no wind on the moon. That's an argument, right? Right. And he's like, that doesn't seem to be that affected by the non-gravity situation. <laughs> You could just be you bouncing mean, around. I just mean it could have been done. And supposedly it was done like in Par uh, Paramount, right? Is that where they said it happened? Oh, I don't know. I don't know I what. I never. You know, I've, I've never heard what lot they shot. I the, think, that, they I think that's where on. it was. <laughs> <Paramount>. <laughs> but at the same time, like <laughs> Star Trek was happening. Sure, yeah. And th those effects are not 
great. You know what I mean? Like you'd never be fooled into thinking, oh my God, well, this is Vasquez documentary rocks footage. Vasquez is Mars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it was gritty. It was dark. It was black and white. Right. You know, it had the whole District 9 vibe to it <laughs> where it was like shot with a little, you know, yeah. a, a rinky dinky camera. It was like pre Blair Witch. Right. Sort of. I'm just saying, man. I'm just you're saying. S- you're okay. saying Blair, the Blair Witch Project and District 9 owe a great debt to the fake moon landing. Right. If it did indeed not happen. Did you ever see that terrible documentary about The Shining? Where no. a, one billion crazy people apparently got in line outside a recording studio. They went in one at a time and said <laughs> what they thought The Shining was about. <laughs> and then they made room for the next guy. No. This, uh, I it's called know. Room... Oh, Room two, Something two, Something. I've what heard is it? of it. 237. 237. But people like that movie. A lot of people inexplicably like that movie. Okay. It's just crazy people talking about... Yeah. Uh, I thought it was. I thought it was going to be all about... Uh, the, the moon landing and that and that well that the theory of uh, 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 Kubrick directed the faked moon landing really which, I that's didn't a know that I didn't yes, know that that is a, that is a popular theory that oh, Kubrick was the theories. one who directed that um, which is why it was so good that's right but millions of takes <laughs> um, and that uh the Shining was his way of uh, sort of secretly saying, like, hey, I directed the thing. Really? And so that's the, that, I think that's the first theory that it's starts convoluted. it off. That's very it's convoluted, convoluted way to say that. Yeah, like it's him having fun. Like, yeah. I'm going to leave a lot of clues in The Shining that, that will, will let you know that I faked the moon landing. Wow. So that's only the very first one. Then there's all these other theories that have nothing to do with that. And we never see any of the people. We just see clips from the movie and other movies. And, people and we hear these people's voices. And after, like, I watched it for a good 20 minutes. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't want to listen to these mentally ill people. Yeah, that seems, well, maybe it gets better towards the end. And that's why people like it. Do you? No. That's why people like it? <laughs> well, you just got to you gotta tough uh, it out for, like... <laughs> That's what I did First with uh, seventy minutes, and then it gets great. That's what I did with season two of True Detective. I really was like, it has to. Get you powered good. through. You powered through. I did. And were you satisfied in the end? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do you believe in any conspiracies? Is there anything that you feel like? <laughs> um. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Here's one that I've devised on my own, but I think other people probably have it. And this is uh, for real. This, this is, is like a this thing is that you 100% think. hundred percent for real. Okay. I mean, but like in all these things, in literally anything I believe, I'm like, yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any like staunch beliefs about anything. <laughs> Nothing. Like there's always, I always allow the pos- like at least a ten percent possibility that I'm totally off base. But that's, I, I think that's a, there, there's a big difference between saying. Um, you know, I could be proven – like if you – if you, let's say if you're an atheist and you say, I don't believe that there is a God. Mm-hmm. But if somebody showed me proof of a God, I wouldn't continue believing that. Isn't that agnostic? It's no. A no, 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 no. Different right? I, isn't, well – Isn't atheist like no and agnostic is like maybe? I, I consider myself an atheist. Right. But if you came up to me and said, look, here's proof that God exists – it would be ridiculous for me to say nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. of course. Yeah. You know. Okay. I don't I don't believe that there is a God. Right. I think that's I think that's the the it always comes down to this argument of like, oh, you're saying there's no God. And it's like, well, I don't I, I don't, don't think believe, that there is. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think there is. Yeah. You know? Um So I have that same sort of uh style of believing in anything. R- anything. Anything. Okay. I mean, do you know anything for well, certain? Oh, so my point was there's a difference between saying there's a difference between saying I I allow for the fact that I could be wrong about this, right? And sort of giving up and saying like, here's what I think, eh, probably not. <laughs> okay, so it's the first one. It's the, it's first, the first one. one. It's okay. The first, but about this specific thing that I'm going to share, yes, I don't care enough about it. Uh, so so it's a little bit of the second one. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think Donald Trump is a decoy. Hmm. That's what I think. Okay. I think there's no way, there's no way that he would get be getting so much attention and say such isolating things to such a huge amount of people mm-hmm. if it wasn't a decoy for something else or somebody else. That's what I think. I see what you are saying. Yes. A, a thing that I come back to when I when I start thinking about stuff like that and I try to see the wheels turning behind some uh, you know invisible machine. Sometimes I come back to the idea like people are dumb though. There's a lot of dumb people. Yes, yes. But that was like Sarah Palin did not believe that she was a de- – I didn't think she was a decoy at all. 
No, I don't think so. I think they really, I think that was just a weird thing that they rushed that through. And, but with Donald Trump, I don't think, I don't think anyone's asked him to do this. I don't think that anyone's even, I don't think anyone's even like, let's see how this plays out. Like this is a a thing that fell into our laps, but we'll use this to our advantage. I don't think anyone knows what they're doing. You think he's just like a megalomaniac that is. I I think that he is, I think he's doing this because it's fun for him to do it. Hmm. I don't think he. I mean, he, yes. I don't think he wants the job of being president. I think he will. I think he's enjoying the fact. And who wouldn't? Some a bunch of people saying you should be the president. We love you and what you're doing. What you are doing the right thing. Like I'm sure that's great to hear. You but, know what I but mean? But there's also much more people saying get the fuck. Yeah, out of absolutely. Here. Can well, I curse on this. I don't. I curse, sure, you can okay. curse as much as you want. Um, I I don't think I don't think that's true though. I think that because he keeps pointing out how he's so popular in the polls. <laughs> that's true. But I, that's all he sees. I, but I think that there's a lot of people that are just so entertained by him. They're not even thinking about it in terms of a political thing. Like when it, yeah. when it comes time to vote, I'd be surprised if if that many people voted for Donald Trump. But then again, sometimes people just are that dumb. I know. And they might say yes, he, he should run the country. He actually is doing well. But I also here's my other. So th- if he drops out right before doing right. this well, that's what like will prove it for me. It's like decoy. I think. Unless I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not though, because maybe he's like, fine, I won't drop out. I did this for you guys because you paid me or asked me to. And now I really want to be president. So I'm not gonna drop out. And then we're all screwed. <laughs> it would be interesting to see. I know. What well, happens. it would be horrible. But it, uh, that goes without saying. <laughs> it would be horrible. But it's already pretty horrible. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think I also think my theory is, my conspiracy theory is, I think Donald <laughs> Trump is mentally ill. I think there's something physically well, yeah. actually physically wrong with him because he just he's he barely makes sense when he speaks. Like he can't he do, he doesn't finish sentences. Yeah, I mean. But also, one time he gave a speech and he had that like white stuff in the corners of his mouth, and I'm like, I think, and he looks terrible, he's like right? Hydrated. <laughs> yeah, like when you see old clips of him, he's very coherent, and he's you know, I, <laughs> look, people like different things. I'm not going to say, yeah. oh, he was a dreamboat, <laughs> but it's like he looks now. He looks unhealthy. He looks he like looks a, unhealthy, like a like a feces. Like he looks like a singular piece of yes, shit. Is yes. that what you're saying? A one feces yeah. that has been molded to resemble a human person and has been bleached. Like that's sure. what I or, sure. or no. not even bleached. A very unhealthy feces. Not to put too fine a point on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> do you vote? I do. Okay. <laughs> So it's it's surprising though when you learn. Would that anybody be like, nope? There's so, they're never like that. Yeah. Well, no, that's not true. There are some people like that. Like, no, I don't vote. Really? Yeah. There, there. I know people, dear friends of mine, who do not vote because they don't want to get jury duty. Oh, is that how you get? Uh, yeah, and so they're willing. Huh. They're willing to say, I I would rather not participate in, in the, the in the in the way we run our country. Even though I I have a say in this, yeah, uh, no and matter an how opinion, small, probably and an opinion. Um, I I ch- I choose to opt out because of jury duty is inconvenient. Well, I, there's, there's a giant wooden table here, and I'm gonna like knock on it a bunch. Yes. I have voted several times, mm-hmm. and I've never been called for jury duty, not once. Have you gotten the the summons in the mail? Um, I. I got it when, like, I used to live in Miami. Like, my mom mailed it to me after I lived here. And I was like, I moved, to, like, across the country, not going to that. So, so they, <laughs> not going to that. Not showing up at court. I am not booking a flight for yeah. jury duty. Yeah, so that was the last time I got one. Just to say I'm a racist uh, and get excused. Is that horrible to say on a, like, podcast that everyone hears? It's a terrible idea. What? Some, no. Some, like, wait, wait, wait. government so, official is going to listen to this and be like, oh, I've got to send her. So does that mean the government still does not know that you live in Los Angeles? I think they do. I've gotten other things from the government here. <laughs> They've I probably, filed taxes and stuff. They've probably seen me on stuff. Yeah, I filed taxes and stuff, <laughs> but no, no jury duty. That's strange. Yeah, That's it's very strange. I know. Maybe I move a lot. I don't know. Maybe you do. <laughs> but the tax is always How frightened. often do you say the regular person gets called to jury duty? A uh, few times a year. A few times. You get a summons what? a few times a year. Yeah. I think I feel like I got a summons a few times a year. That's crazy. I just did it for the first time. I had never done it before, and I just did it for the first time earlier this year. So if you got a few times a year, how did you get out of doing it a few times a year, and you just did it for the first time this year? I I asked for a, a deferment or whatever it's called, and it was oh. granted to me. One time I had to go in person and, and, and write a letter to the judge and say, because it was pilot season. I'm like, this is the time of year where I look for work, essentially, and so I can't do it, and I was right. excused and let go. And then other times I was not called. 
And then finally, there was one time where I I had used up my last you know postponement. Yeah. And I got called in and I got picked. Oh, because they literally call you. You don't have to show up and see if they. Call. You have to call in. Oh. You get the summons, then you call in every day. <laughs> this I is can't how believe I've explained. <laughs> This is interesting. Hey, hey guys, are you are you interested in our, <laughs> in, in our civic system? Uh, <laughs> young people, this is what you have to look forward to. Yeah, well, not if you're me. Not if you're you. Yeah, yeah that's very strange. Scathed by without it. I happening. know. Some, I also know some people who are like they. Uh, I might they look forward to it. They do complain about our our process and our our leaders and stuff like that, but then they throw away their jury duty summons. Mm. They throw it away. <laughs> The and trash. they never like. What happens? Do you go to do you go to jail? You can get in trouble eventually. Yeah. 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 Like what? What do they do to you? I think it's firing squad. Yeah. All right. Well, good. I'm glad I've never <laughs> been summoned. There you go. Well, you what's your conspiracy smoking. theory? What do you What do you believe in? Sort of. Oh, I think that uh, that there's a uh, a bunch of Jewish people living in the center of the earth that control everything. Well, <laughs> Natalie, that is all the time we have. Oh. Natalie, where can people find you online? Uh, my full name, Natalie Morales, That's on right. Twitter. Not the Today Show Not the Show Today host. Show lady. She came after me. That's right. Uh, you were an early adopter. You got it yes, there first. Yes, and she'll never get my name. <laughs> did uh, she ask you for it? No, but somebody, a producer from the Today Show did. And mm. I was like, fuck off. Is she Natalie Morales 1 on Twitter? No, she's like <laughs> NBC Natalie Morales. Ah. Something. So if she ever leaves NBC... There you go. Yeah. And right. she's verified. You can't change your name once you're verified. <laughs> can't You can't? You can't. All right. Well, I'm not changing mine. So that's where you can find me. I also have a ridiculous Instagram account called Natalie Morales Loves Free Stuff. And it's <laughs> only existence. The only reason it exists is so that people send me free things. Right. That's the, literally the only reason I have it. Mm -hmm. uh, How's that working? Pretty good. What's your favorite thing you've gotten so far? I got a really cool board game. <laughs> What's the board game? It's called Party Time. <laughs> Don't just make stuff up. I am not. You can see a photo of it. Party I reviewed time. It. I reviewed it. And All right. Like, yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> I played it with my friends. It's a good game. What's your great white whale? What's the thing you want to get, but they haven't given it to you yet? Oh, uh, probably like, uh, what, what are those really expensive British vacuums? <laughs> The Dyson? Yeah, I would love a Dyson or like a Vitamix. Like those are like sure. my, wow, that's very domestic of me. But like I really, they're too expensive to Who buy on would my say, own. That's right. Who would say no to a Vitamix? I want, give I you want, one? Yeah, I want a Dyson, man. I really do. Is your house very dirty? <laughs> no, I clean it, but I put a lot of work into it. And I'd sure. like to put in less work into cleaning it. You have one of those things <laughs> where it's just you push it over the. Yeah, you, you know, like at it. restaurants when they run over when there's crumbs on the floor and that they're like thing. quickly. What is that thing called? I don't know. I don't have one of those. I've never oh. been able to find one, but it seems very. Does everyone know what I'm talking about? All right. I, I've, I've, I'm imagining the listener going, you're not describing the thing. I don't know what I want to say it's called about. a rug rover, but that's just my. Ooh, I like the that's idea That's just the that. name I would call it. Remember when they had the rug rover and the fake moon landing footage? <laughs> Just to clean up the extra rocks. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> clean up the extra rocks. Natalie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We are going to take a break, and during the break, I will get a location for our improv from Natalie Morales, and then we will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else when Spontanea Nation returns. Oh. Good evening, Machete Falls. This is Roger News at News Control. Speaking of saying the word news a couple times, breaking news. There is now a new way to buy mattresses. A company calling itself Lisa has reportedly, in their words, done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience. The very kind we profiled in our award-worthy consumer advocate series entitled Mattress Shamers. Sources say Lisa has created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and ships for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. Regular news control viewers will remember our award-denied 12-part series on things the size of mini fridges entitled, Don't Put Beer and Soda in Me, I Am Only the Size of a Mini Fridge, We Shared No Other Characteristics. The title was deemed too long for the series to be eligible for award consideration. 
Sources embedded at Lisa, some pun intended, tell us that the 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes and is crafted with three unique foam layers for cooling supportive comfort. And in a shocking turn of news events, Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattresses risk-free. And finally, eyewitnesses claim that Lisa is like the Tom shoes for mattresses. For every 10 mattresses they sell, they donate one to a shelter. Now, in all my years of news reporting, I can tell you that I have never said those words in that particular combination before forgive my editorializing here now with the weather is our own paul f tompkins uh thanks roger weather well the forecast is uh go to leesa.com slash pft and enter promo code pft at checkout to get 75 dollars off that's lisa.com leesa.com slash pft enter promo code pft at checkout and get 75 dollars off back to you roger Good night, and may the news be with you. Don't sue us. <laughs> oh, I could have listened to that ad forever. Welcome back, everyone, to Spontaneous Nation, which this still is. It is time to meet our improviser pals. Seated? What? Hold on. Before I introduce them individually, this is the first time we've had on the show an improv collective. These guys are a team. They're together in all kinds of weather. And now I'm here too. <laughs> it's a real mashup. They are known as, I'm going to introduce individually and then give the, they are known as, right? That's like the fun part of it. And Evan will do like a build up thing. Uh, don't start now because <laughs> get ready. <laughs> you'll know, you'll know when. Seated right goddamn next to me. He's been on the show many, 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 many times. Uh, hear me, God? He will be on many, 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 many more. Whew. He is my colleague in the Thrilling Adventure Hour. And he is also Craig Kikowski. I am both of those things. You are? Yes. Cack attackers, let me hear you. <laughs> What's up, my cack attackers? <laughs> Right now, they're applauding with their phones. <laughs> Craig, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Paul. Good to be here. Always a pleasure to see you. Always a pleasure. Uh, a pleasure. Oh, you are a treasure. <laughs> you are a treasure. You have been traveling recently. Yeah. Portland, Austin. Yeah. Keeping it weird. Both places. Now, did you? here's what I heard. Yeah. That you saw that people in Portland are now saying keep it weird. I, th I was familiar with Portland keeping it weird first. Uh, really? Yes. The Austinites... Uh, claim that the Portlanders have stolen that from them. The Portlanders claim to have been weird first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but were they the first to exhort other people to keep it weird? I don't know. It's a real cultural battle. Both places are pretty weird, though. I've always associated keep it weird with Austin. I didn't realize Portland ever said that. Right across from Vodo, Vodo Donuts. Vodo Donuts. <laughs> Vodo Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> or voodoo donuts, as normal people say it. They are a catty corner from each other, right? <laughs> Voto do nuts. Voto do nuts and, and voodoo, voodoo donuts. donuts. Yeah, yeah. It's quite the rivalry. Uh, Portland just known for its tongue twisters. He's Austin. He's Austin. Oh, I, think. <laughs> I just crawled out of the desert to do the show. <laughs> Is Austin really that weird, though? It's weird for Texas. It's I guess. exactly. <laughs> it's weird for Texas. By Texan standards, it's pretty weird. If you are a Dallasite and you go to Austin, you go back to Dallas saying it's weird there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> People are somewhat moderate. They're not walking around <laughs> with guns. Yeah. Shooting them in the streets. Their hair's so small. <laughs> And they all 100% agree on everything. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> that, is that is weird. weird. That is weird, though, guys. Craig, I'm moving on to the next person. Well, all right, Paul, you do that. I'm going to be texting for the rest of this episode. <laughs> Keep it weird. <laughs> Seated across from Craig. Kitty corner from me. The voodoo donuts to my vodo do nuts. <laughs> Rich Tallarico. Hello, sir. Rich, hello to you. I haven't seen you in years. It's been quite a while since we've seen each other. That's right. Although, did we run into each other at some, like, a UCB thing recently? Perhaps. I think I also came to see A Thrilling Adventure recently. Sure. Been enjoying that. Enjoyed the movie of The Thrilling Adventure. Well, bless your heart for watching the concert film. Yes. 
Aren't you something? Look at you. <laughs> you didn't need to do that. It was a pleasure to do it. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. Uh, Rich, when's the last time we saw each other, do you think? Paul, I want to say it was playing the video game Halo. That's correct. And uh, this was before it was online. <laughs> That's and right. People would set it up in a house, and there'd be like you know 12 people all playing on two machines connected, and it was very exciting. <laughs> and then it, then it went online, and everybody's mm -hmm. skill set went through the roof. And I, I got out of the game. I don't know <laughs> about you, but I was like, oh, this is no longer just running around. <laughs> right. I would shoot around. teammates, whatever. It, <laughs> yeah. You know, just having Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. But there are people that play 24 7, then you engage yeah. with them, and you just keep finding yourself instantly dead. Yeah. It's not fun. Even in the replay, I couldn't tell how I was being killed. <laughs> <laughs> They'd show the replay. I was like, what happened? I don't even. I was just looking around for some guns, man. <laughs> But I think we were playing like a few house parties where that was like the thing yeah. to do. I want to say that was like early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And it, at its height, that, that was a regular game that went on for many years. It was played, for, not for many years, for, for a year. I think for like a solid year. And it was played at Paget Brewster's house, mm -hmm. a friend of the show. Um, and at its height, I think we had four televisions and four Xboxes. And 16 people playing at yes. once. And people waiting to play. That's right. Like four guys that were like, hey, can I get in there? <laughs> <laughs> that gross feeling of like you leave a place and the sun's coming up. Yeah. Like, I just played video games <laughs> until a new day happened. I'm but, out, though. I'm out. I don't play that much anymore. Is there any way I can tempt you yes, to get back in? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Rich. Good way, good way I'm moving on to the next person. Please do. This is a new feature of the show where I inform the current person and move on to the next person. I miss you already. The <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman, Bob, we have not actually spent that much time in each other's company. No, I've seen you more than you've seen me. Probably. That I don't think that's true. I think I've seen you plenty know. of places. Well, I've seen you too. Uh, the Carpet Brothers? I, I, that was me, but I, I saw you in many things. Did you wait? <laughs> did you see me from the Carpet Brothers? Could you see me from in that? It's a new tech, uh, a new technology they're working on. Uh, chilling. Yeah, the Carpet Brothers. By the way, that's you can still find that online, right? Sure, it's still out there. Very funny uh, web series that featured uh, my next guest, uh, Mark Evan Jackson, and Tim Meadows. Um, as three guys who run at literal brothers, right? Literal and brothers. they run a carpet company. Yes. And it and it just gets insane. It's a weird show. Yeah, that was uh, written by Matt Piedmont, who is incredible, and uh, and play with Mark and Tim were equally incredible. It's a great show. The Thanks Carpet so Brothers. Seek it out. What is his name? Well, I'll tell you right now. Don't, it's Bob Dassey. Oh, don't tell him. Why? <laughs> I like to keep under the radar. You know. Would you have preferred to just have been completely mysterious and, and have people asking me, who's that other guy? <laughs> if, if I could be for, so fortunate that people would ask that question. <laughs> Why? <love> do you, <laughs> you seem to not like yourself. No, I, I, I have a, a, a strong love affair with myself. Uh, oh. I like to keep it between just me and me. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> you like to keep it private, your relationship uh, with you. I don't want to share. I'm spread thin enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this ought to be fun. <laughs> Bob, do you play video games? You know, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a real politician's answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever? Do you currently? I have. Did you ever <laughs> or have you now? <laughs> Early on, I was at one of those uh, Xbox parties. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that all the kids were doing. Yes. And uh, I was invited because I knew people that did that. And he said, hey, maybe Bob would want to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, sure, I'm game for anything back in the day. Uh, and so I went to one of those things. And uh, it was at a, a, a house where a lot of our, our friends uh, co-lived. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it was... It was a disaster. But uh, uh, they all set it up just like you said, you know, mm -hmm. boxes and whatnot. And I got on there and I realized, hey, these guys really know what to do. I do not. Right. It'd be the equivalent of me showing up to like a basketball pickup game mm -hmm. where everybody's very proud of their skills. And I'm like, hey, let's fuck around a little bit. And the looks that I got 
of being on a team at the Xbox where I it was it was like I was given the wheel of a car and smashed into houses. They were like, "What are you doing here?" I was like, "I'm just having fun." <laughs> All right, that was the one and oh, only time. No. Never invited back. Oh. No, 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 no. They were they were in the right. They were in the right. I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know how deep it was. I jumped in the deep end and drowned. And right. they had to throw and my dead car 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 carcass You outside. pulled some other people down with you. <laughs> I did. I dragged a, a bunch of people down with me. So. Well, there was a few of us from that group who uh, we entered a, t a tournament. <laughs> well, yeah. we're like, hey, we're pretty good at this game. <laughs> Why don't we go play in this thing? And uh, we were trounced so fast and so hard by children <laughs> it was mortifying yeah. and it was immediate like oh <laughs> well, we should not have done this like within within 10 seconds of gameplay we realized this was a grave error it's dangerous in there yeah ladies and gentlemen Craig Rich and Bob are known collectively as Desariski it's a combination of all their last names do you get it Sound it out. Das, like in Bob Dassey. That's right. Ari from Rich Tallarico. <laughs> Ari. That's right. And Ski from Craig Kakowski. That's exactly right. You're saying if you put all three of those together, yeah. that's the group that they're in. How much work went into crafting that? Or was it, it simple? Was right Craig's away? idea. Craig's right. idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was my idea. Uh, I thought it was equitable. We took three letters from each of our names. Very fair. Uh, and so, yeah, about 15 years ago, we decided to name our group something that is unpronounceable and unspellable. Oh. Which is I great for marketing purposes. Can't, can't, can't imagine anything about that at all. <laughs> Spontaneous. <-ish. laughs> um, it would, if, if there's one S, then would it be Dazariski? Ooh. Some people say Dazzle no. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Everything is just <laughs> meaningless. <laughs> we got to change the name. We did get one review from a woman who assumed our name was a pun on That's a Risky. <laughs> oh my God. And then That's a Risky. Like, that, we're, we're risky up there. Yeah, it's improv. Oh. It's risky. People you don't know are what's looking for happen. connections. That's oh. all. She's just looking for a connection. We Damn. only ran with that for a couple of months, and then we let it die down. It hit me like a punch in the stomach. <laughs> well, let's do this anyway. <laughs> During the break, we secured our location from, <laughs> from Natalie Morales, and we're going to reveal it to you. But first, let me tell you this. We use sound effects to help tell our story. They move us about in time. Let's say we're going to, let's say we're in a, uh, let's say we're in a scene, right? And then we want to find out what's happening Somewhere else at the exact same time, we'll hear this cut to sound effect. That means something's happened concurrent to the scene that we're currently in. Let's say someone's having a memory, or we're going to discover how something came to be. We'll hear this flashback sound effect. Harp glissando. Classic. Let's say we want to get back from that uh, flashback into the present day, or go into the mysterious future. We'll hear... The vibes that signify a flash forward. There you go. It couldn't be simpler. And any one of the improvisers can hit these buttons at any time. Now that you know what we're going to do, what are you going to do about it? That was needlessly confrontational. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to reveal our location given to us by Natalie Morales. And that location is the moon landing taping. 1969. We take you now to the moon landing taping 1969. You need more ginger ale, Mr. Kubrick? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where, you got any more of those uh, shrimps? <laughs> more shrimp? <laughs> I think it's just shrimp, Mr. Kubrick. Nah, plural. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll see. Um, the, uh, the cast is, uh, Still arriving. Uh, we've kept the call sheet very secretive. Listen, I want to apologize if I normally don't have an accent that I should have. <laughs> well, I, I, I had no idea. This is a secret project that I'm protecting my my voice. So it's not going to sound anything like Stanley Kubrick. Well, that, that's fine, Mr. Kubrick. I know you are a New Yorker, so I believed it right away. That, but now the disclaimer is making me... Hey, it's me, Gregory me. Peck. I'm here to play one of the astronauts. I apologize if I have an accent I don't normally have. Oh, uh, 
Hi, Mr. Peck. I'm uh, I'm Toby. I'm the first AD. Toby, nice to meet you. Now, where's my area? Where are my things? Uh, we've got you set up in uh, one of the bigger Paramount dressing rooms. Oh, nice. It's been a while. I haven't been here since I shot Mockingbird. Uh, to kill a Mockingbird? Oh, look at you. You know the lingo and everything. You're on your way up, aren't you, Toby? I did think your performance in that was was powerful because I could tell that there was an undercurrent of horrible racism in your character that didn't come out anywhere in the movie but might be revealed. Oh, you caught in the that. Yes. Oh, I'm glad. You know what? I hope no one ever finds out about it. It's my little secret. Now, who am I playing again? Well, uh, this is Mr. Kubrick, the director. I don't know if Hi, Stan. Of course, we know before. each other. It's good to see you again. We haven't worked. We haven't worked together since uh, that the Pruder film we did. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You were uh, the extra guy in the gl- grassy knoll. That's right, grassy knoll Gus. I called myself. Little backstory. <laughs> he's aller- he's allergic to grass. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive my flirt. I caught speech. that. I know that the Zapruder film is only 15 seconds, but I That's right. I got everything out yeah. of your performance. At there. the very end, you can see me go, Kerchoo! You, you put a lot into it that, you know, really came through in the end. Well, I'm Gregory Peck, so what the fuck else am I going to do? At ease, everybody. <laughs> no need to salute me just because I'm so well decorated. Look at this guy. He's got fruit salad on his jacket, <laughs> scrambled eggs on his cap. Uh, General, uh, Mr. Kubrick, the director, and uh, Mr. Peck. Mr. Peck, I'm sorry. I'm just uh, one guy. R- Richard Speck. It's uh, not like I'm a bunch of shrimps. <laughs> Richard Speck is unable to make it as he's serving oh, prison no. time in Chicago right oh, now. But, um, poor Dicky Speck. So you're the guy that's going to get us on the moon. Well, you know, it's going to look like that, but you're not going to actually be on there. But the reason to do it is so you can make a lot of money. Going forward, you're going to build a lot of shit that doesn't have to actually leave the ground. It's about the money. That's what it's all about. We want to put it to those Ruskies. Let them know what's for. Let them know what? We want to let them know what's for. Let them know what's for? Yeah. Look, I hate the Russians, too. We got that in common. That's a well-known catchphrase. My kids say it all the time. (laughs) <laughs> Look, with, with all due respect, General, you're in Hollywood now. We have our own catchphrases here. We, we don't usually speak in military terms. How do you talk? Well, <laughs> yeah, tell them. Well, we say a lot of things like call sheet and the biz. And laughs aren't laughs, UGH. They're laughs with two Fs. Yeah, somebody ankled the sked. What the hell? Look, are you going to get us on the moon? I want to make sure we got rockets. I want 36 rockets all landing at the same time. We are invading the moon. Does this? I feel like this guy doesn't know what's going on. I got a direct line to the president. He wants this. Wait a minute. What was the conversation you had with the president? Well, Mr. President, I'll do whatever you want me to do. All right, look here. Uh, people don't like me. They think I'm tricky. Um, they're like, he's Tricky Dick Nixon, right? That's Yeah, that's what they say in the papers. So what we got to do is we got to get up on that moon, and we got to really rub them Russians' faces in it. Oh, yeah. We got to let them know what's for. Yeah, what's so, for, that's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a kid say that the other day. <laughs> Those kids. <laughs> so uh, I need you to get us uh, get us on the moon, wink, wink. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I know what you're talking about. How many rockets you want on there? Did you get the part where I said, wink, wink? Wink, 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 wink. I know that's technically impossible. We're not skilled enough. Uh, by the way, um, President Nixon. Oh, hello. Henry Kissinger here. Um, <laughs> Were you under the desk? How did you just pop up? <laughs> yes, I'm hiding under the desk taping everything. He's always taping stuff. He like, he's like, he's, like, he's under there. He's, he's under there like, hold on, hold on. I got to press, press play and record at the same time. Don't um, start talking yet. <laughs> Premier Khrushchev is on the line for you whenever you want to take that Oh, call. no. Put him on the speaker. We will bury you. What's up, crew? Hey, how you doing? I'm good, man. <laughs> What's shaking down there? We are getting so close to the moon ski. Oh, but you you killing me with this. <laughs> you got to be so jealous, buddy, when we're up there. Man, you know I am. I, I, I tell you what. I tell you what. Here's what it's for. We're going to get up to that moon first. How you going to feel about that? No, man. We're going to get up there before you guy. We're going to make some toast up there, brother. What the... Go make toast up there. Oh, yeah. We're going to play golf up there. That's Ooh, what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, good one. We're going to play golf play up golf. there. Because we're so leisurely, because we're, we're so no, confident. We're going to have a whole line of people waiting to buy bread up there. Oof. 
Well, that that sends a bad message. I mean, I guess it proves it's Russian, but it's like, do you really want that to be what people see? I'd be terrible. As soon as the Russians are on the moon, they're already waiting in line for bread. That's a problem with communism right there. Ooh, that's right. Yeah, yeah I was just calling to see how you're doing with your program. Where, what you, where are you at? Oh, we're real good. We're going to be up on the moon, uh, I'm going to say, any day now. Any day now. It's looking pretty good. Well, we're ahead of you in the time zone, so, you know. Oh, shit. Well, any minute now, then. Any, uh, ooh, that's a bold promise. <laughs> <No, no. laughs> any minute now. I'll, I'll, any I'll minute. I don't know call. if we can deliver on that, Mr. President. All right. Oh, I got an idea. All right. Um, okay. Hey, good talking to your crew. We'll catch you on a flip flop. Take a sleazy. So we got to play golf up on the moon. Yeah, but you know, like why we're here in the studio, right? Like what that's all about? We got to look like we're on that moon doing things that we would do on the ground. Okay, you do get it. Good. Uh, by the way, oh, Mr. Yeah. Kubrick, I have a few different golf clubs for you to look at. I don't know uh, which one you prefer. Let's do the wedge. Okay. Great. It looks oh. good on camera. Reads. Okay. I, I, you're famous <laughs> for being very exacting and very specific about what you like. I mean, don't you even want to see what... I mean, I got... I got 14 golf clubs. Look, I, I know you're going to get paid if we use your clubs, so you're trying to use more of your clubs, No, no, they're not, they're not my clubs, Mr. Kubrick. I mean, Toby, let me talk to him. Stan. Greg. Peck. That's me. Oscar winner. Remember me in Gentleman's Agreement? Oh, classic. It's all about anti-Semitism. It's bad, turns out. <laughs> Listen. The movie or anti-Semitism? Uh, how dare you, Toby. I know that you like everything just so. And I feel like you're afraid this is not that important a project because it's only a 15-second movie. But I think it would be really, I think it would really mean a lot to people if you approached it the way you approach any one of your films, be just as demanding and insane as you are for all your projects. Okay. Thanks, Greg. I mean, you're really helping me keep it in perspective here. I'm behind you. I'll do like a billion takes if you want. I want to get this right. Well, the good news is we can have you play all the parts because... <gasps> oh, like a Peter Sellers. Yeah, because the shield, face shields are going to be down. No one's going to know. But now let me ask, did it really need to be me? You could have gotten anyone. You could have gotten Toby here to do it. Oh, no, Mr. Peck, I, I could never I could never act the way that you do. That's right. That was a test. Good, good work, Toby. Yeah, the president bad. wants the best on that moon. That's okay? right. Okay. And by the way, I didn't like that strange love thing. It made the, it made the people that I hang out with look like jerks. <laughs> Those are my friends. Well, it's a satire, uh, General. Yeah, well, I don't like satire. I like happy tires. And I want them to be <laughs> funny. Make them laugh. All right? Make them jokes. The opposite of satire is not happy tire. What are you? Uh, you're, you're just one of those interns, right? I'm uh, the first AD. You, the first you see AD. these? You see these things on my chest? These are all buttons that they gave me from being a long way away from fronts. Okay? I told people where to go and do things. A lot of salad on your shirt there. Yeah, well, I was eating lunch on the move, you know, because I'm like a shark. All right, let's turn these fans off, everybody. There could be no wind on the moon. Can we leave one on just because it's boiling hot? All it's right. pretty hot in leave here. Leave Gregory's fan on. Thank you. Just leave but my that fan better on, better not guys. screw up a shot. I can't imagine it would. All right. Uh, we, how many rockets we got on the on the uh, on the moon? On the what? moon, none. <laughs> what? You, keep, you keep asking about these rockets. The president wants some rockets landing on the moon. Are you okay. sure that's what he said? One more time. Yeah, okay, so um, the way it works is, uh, you know, they go up in a rocket, then they get on the moon, and on the moon it's like a little uh, like a little buggy kind of thing, just like a little capsule, you know? You want them to ride around on a buggy in the moon? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love it. All right. I, I mean, mean, can you imagine that? Uh, them, them uh, sons of bitches, like, uh, cruising around that dune buggy, and they're like, <laughs> we're, the, we're, the, we're the USA number one. You're the president. That's right, for a little while at least. <laughs> Right. Hey, Mr. <laughs> Is that all that happened? Well, there was this other thing that was about to. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Mr. President, yeah. it's me, G. Gordon Liddy. Hey, Gord! What's happening, man? Good to see you, Gordo. Hey, how you doing, Kiss? <laughs> Listen, kiss, man. kiss. Do you, do you know the general over here? Oh, do I know the general? Yeah, we go way back. I killed a few, helped him with a few problems. <laughs> 
Listen, anyway, I got an in over at that hotel. I just made friends with a maid over there. She's going to get everything all set. The, uh, oh, oh, at the Hilton? No. <laughs> <laughs> at the, oh, Grand, the Grand Marriott? Uh, no. Holiday Inn? Marriott Courtyard? <laughs> no, but I, I do have a friend over there. But Best Western Atrium? No. Uh, stop listing hotels. <laughs> <laughs> two more. Okay, do two more. <laughs> you do one, Hank. Um, oh. <laughs> all, all I'm just coming to mind is hotels from my native Austria. Throw one of them in there. I'd love to hear a crazy Austrian name hotel. The Living House? <laughs> no. I want to say one even though I know it's not it. <laughs> do, so, do it, do it, do it. Sofitel. Oh, oh fancy. That's, that's fancy. I'm yeah. this guy over here. Like that's not it. General, you got a hotel name? Uh, how about a motel? Because I uh, like to meet indiscriminately. Indiscriminately? <laughs> that was close. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, look... <laughs> G. Gordon Liddy do in here any second. <laughs> Did you want to name a hotel? <laughs> <laughs> double tree. Did anyone say double tree? <laughs> no. Nope. All right, double tree. All right. Good news, guys. Anyway, you, you talking about Watergate, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, he. I think he said from your story, it sounds like it was just the one sort uh, of rocket to get up there. Well, I like to make a, an impression, you know. He wants a buggy too. Did you hear about the buggy? Oh, a buggy! That sounds like fun. The well, buggy's got to roll around, and uh, yeah, and I want lasers. Well, G General, the special effects should probably match the story that we're telling the general public. What story are we telling? Well, we're telling them that three astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, are going up uh, in one capsule, uh, Apollo Eleven. I always forget about that third guy. He just waits inside. Boy, what a what a job. Looks at everyone else having fun, and he's like, oh, I wish I could go to the moon. I came all this way. That's so close. <laughs> uh, General, I got an idea just to make the project more authentic. This is me, Stanley Kubrick, again. <laughs> I really think... Uh, everyone knows who you are, Mr. Kubrick. I mean, uh, your voice is unmistakable. Well, thank you very much. I didn't know if I had an accent. <laughs> Listen, you do. <laughs> Listen, I want to... I want to leave an Easter egg in there in case someone figures it out in the future. Ooh, I like the sound of this. All right. Wait, Easter I don't want you going to tip it off. You're going to tip off the... No, home. no, like years from now. After we're all dead, somebody will figure it out, but let's help them. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> What's that? Another. <laughs> <laughs> what, what secret project are you working on, Jim? No, no, no. Pay no attention to... Uh, hold on one second. Whew. I got to get out of there. This coffee looks good. I better get back. Where the hell did you go? Where, where were we? Where were we? You were just about to leave to go get some coffee, I think. Uh, yeah. You're, General, you're... For one brief second... For one brief second, you wavered as if you weren't here. Like, you... Ooh, where were you? Your, your image became fuzzy, and then it became solid again. General! Hold on a second. Can I ask a question? I'm Gregory Peck. Yes, Gregory. General, you said something about wanting to live forever. What? Then also you sort of shimmered in a way that was sort of freaky deaky. Do you have time powers? Well, let's just say. What am I gonna do? Oh boy, they're all looking at me. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. hey stop <laughs> talking to yourself and help help me with my Trump campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I went too far. I went too far. Hey, but I am gonna live forever. That's good. What is going on? This general has time powers? What, what? How did this impact the faked moon landing? Guys, I can't wait to find out what happens next. But you have to, because here comes a commercial. After that, Spontaneous Nation will return! <laughs> Merry Christmas, you sorry sons of bitches! I know, I know, it's early. Hey everyone, Santa Claus here. I just wanted to tell you about something that's happening in December called Spontaneous Nation Live! <laughs> oh, my laugh started off weird at first. Took me a while to get into the groove! Listen, this show happens Saturday, December 5th at Largo at the Coronet World Famous Theater. 
And it's the live version of the podcast you're listening to right now. Oh, they're going to recreate the stuff they're doing on this episode? No! God damn it, you know that's not what they're going to do. Fucking listen to me. It's an all new show. It's just live and it's on the, on its feet right in front of you. An audience. Jesus Christ. Don't make Santa angry. The improvisers are leg- the <laughs> The improvisers are all very nice. They're not naughty. It's uh, Hal Lublin. He's a Jew, but so what? He still gets a Christmas. Annie Savage. I think she's Presbyterian. And Janet Varney. Uh-oh, Latter-day Saints. Weird. I think she's done with that now. And the special guest is Ron Funches. <laughs> He's got a laugh that rivals mine. His is more of a giggle, though. This is going to be a great show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Will Eben Schletter be there? Of course he will. What the fuck? Why wouldn't he be? I don't have time for your stupid goddamn questions. I gotta make a bunch of wooden horses and shit. I shouldn't be taking time to do this ad in the first place. Anyway, yeah, he'll be there and... All the proceeds go to charity. Tis the season, you stingy motherfuckers. Climb outside of your own ass and realize there's suffering in the world. All the proceeds from the show go to Habitat for Humanity. People need homes, you pricks. Come on. For tickets, go to pauleftopkins.com slash live. You won't want to miss this. It's going to be a great show. And then afterwards, a meet and greet with the cast. Buy a poster by this guy, Nathan Diffie. He's real talented. Then you can get the cast to sign the poster. God damn it, I'm not going to tell you how to have your evening. pauleftopkins.com slash live. Go do it! You shitheads! <laughs> Merry not Christmas yet! Friends and friends, you truly are. I would like to say a special thank you to some people who have donated specifically to Spontanea Nation to let Earwolf know that some people are listening to Spontanea Nation. In the $100 club, Jeremy Jackson, a name that I thought was like joshua jackson and then realize no it's different but i think there is a famous jeremy jackson but not so famous that i can immediately call to mind who or what he is brian resnick which when i pasted his name into this document <laughs> was autocorrected to redneck brian i don't think you sound like a redneck at all because your name sounds kind of you know resnick elizabeth ventura the the one hundred dollar donation detective, smoking, Sam Mackey hyphen Ward. That's the joining of two families to combine their riches, and it really paid off when they sent me a hundred dollars. Yeah, me personally. You guys know these donations go right into my pocket. Ron Alig, A L I G, a lig, a lig. A league, a lige, covered every base. Then there were three people whose names were not provided, but their emails were provided. So I'm going to give you the prefix to their email. Madeline John Hunter, <laughs> all one word. I don't know if that's a lady named Madeline and she hunts people named John. I don't know if her last name is John Hunter and she comes from a family of John Hunters. Or if her name is Madeline John, and it's like a family thing, uh, where oh, where it's either it's either a woman with a man's middle name or a man with a woman's first name, and their occupation, of course, hunter. Telly Meyer, T E L L Y M E I E R. Maybe that is the famous Sesame Street monster Telly, and we've just learned his last name. Thank you, monster. For your one hundred dollar donation, one hundred dollar donation. Calnert, C A L N E R T. Calnert, a California nerd, if ever I've heard one. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are saying California nerds are responsible for the drought. I disagree. Thank you all for your one hundred dollar donations. Now moving on to one hundred and fifty dollars. This guy is all by himself. Nathan Mendel. Thank you, Nathan, for going a little further than the other ones did. Not that that, hey, $100 people, great job. But look, 
Nathan made you all look like pebbles in the sand. <laughs> the old expression. But then look out, Nathan, you have been erased from my gratitude memory bank because donating $200 are two people whose names I don't have. Some dude on the Internet that well, I love how vague that sounds in, in this circumstance. Some dude on the Internet. Thank you for your $200 donation. Also, I know who this person is, but his name was stricken from the record for some reason. I believe his name is Sean Sakume, and his handle is going to sound not good out of context. Snap the Jap. Who snap the Jap. Sean, I believe this is you. Thank you. You and some dude on the Internet for your two hundred dollar donations. Thank you so much. And now you can both go to hell because donating two hundred and fifty dollars. Thomas J. Fitzpatrick, the second. That's right. A guy with Roman numerals in his name. He donated two hundred and fifty dollars. That is a Roman numeral move right there. Thank you, Thomas J. Fitzpatrick, the second for your generous donation. Thank you all for your generous donations. No one has to give money to this podcast, uh, but people that do, they're trying to show some support and I appreciate it. And everyone here at Spontaneous Nation appreciates it, except for Eben, who will never hear this and doesn't get any of this money. Back to the show. General. Yes. You have some sort of science fiction powers, don't you? Look, I, uh, I'm involved in some things that you can't know about. Toby, can I talk to you for just one second? Sure thing. Now, Toby, I'm going to give you a... I'm going to give you an order, and it's a direct order. you got to do it. Yes, sir, General Tim E. Powers. You don't have to say my whole name. Just General Powers. Is, you can call me Powder Boy. Anyway. You're Timothy Edward Powers. I mean, you were first in your class at, uh, at uh, West Point. You don't have to tell me who I am. I know what's going on. Tim E. Powers. Tim E. Powers, yes. Tim, mm? capital E, period, Powers. Right. Just think about it for a second. Mm. <laughs> it's a little on the nose, but listen, I want you to kill Gregory Peck. <laughs> what? Uh, he, I, he knows too much. I said too much. It's my fault, really, but he's got to go. He I, knows that I can do the things with the time. But he's the only... Hey, when, you, when you're getting the M&Ms, use the spoon. Like, don't just put your whole hand in there. Oh, why? Because I'm a crew guy? I don't wash my hands? No, he's for everybody. Well, I'm just saying, like, I, you know, we're all trying to have a good time here. I you, feel should bad. Know, you should know better. I mean, you're a di major director. I'm just saying, use the spoon. You got to make it look like an accident. It's got to happen on the moon. <laughs> Wait, we're going to kill him while shooting? We're going to shoot him while shooting. There's going to be two guns, all right? There's going to be two shooters. Stanley knows the drill. He's been here before. Oh, no. What I, I, I could have done a Tums commercial today. <laughs> How do I spell relief? T-U-M-S. It's delicious and refreshing. What are, you, what are you doing? I don't understand what you're doing. Isn't this the Tums commercial? Stan, what's happening with you? Look, I'm secretly doing another job. Uh, what? On the side, over in the corner here, I'm shooting a tum spot. You're, sp you're spreading yourself very. Is it a top secret tum spot? It's a new flavor. They don't want to. Oh, oh mum's the word. I won't say a word to anyone. It's a secret tum spot that's only going to air for the Illuminati. Oh, believe me, I'm uh, I'm on that mailing list. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually going to fix their acid indigestion rather than the fake tums that go out to the general public. <laughs> Wait till you see what we do with time travel. Oh, no. Now I gotta kill you, too. Oh, no. First kill Gregory and then kill yourself. But after the shoot, we gotta get on that moon. <laughs> All right, let's just do one. Let's just do one from the top. Right. Greg, how are you feeling? I feel good. So basically, my action is I just sort of like bounce up and down. I'm like skipping along on the moon's, uh, uh, you know, lesser gravity. And uh, that's kind of it, right? I'm just like having a great time up on the moon. I want you to go from the horizon line down here to the front near the camera, 
bouncing. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna slow it down so it looks like you're bouncing through low gravity. Oh, fun! Isn't that cool? Okay, yeah, yeah. that's and, great. And it's weird. You have to over crank. They call it. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it weird? You'd think you'd have to under crank. Exactly. It's that's weird. what I would think to slow yeah. it down. Yeah. 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 And should he say something when he steps on the moon? You know, something to reflect the enormity of the moment? Well, we're shooting out of order, but you want to do the, the actual getting off first? I'm, that's so presumptive of me to tell you, Mr. Kubrick. <laughs> no, no, Toby, I'm glad you're shoot. here. Sure, we could do the... It's we a real the, small crew. You, 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 <laughs> you coming off the thing. You want to do coming off the thing first? I'll do coming off the thing. I, I thought look. we would save that. But all right, we could do that first. Guess what? I'm here all day, so whatever you want to do. You Let's just point do that me. first. We'll chronologically make okay. some more sense. Okay, shoot in order. Okay, like, like Eastwood... Clint Eastwood has been talking about doing. He's a good actor. He's a good actor. Do you think he can direct? No. <laughs> I don't either. No. He can. What? The, what general? general? What? Uh, how would you know? How would you? It's ridiculous. Just, how would you know? I have some inside sources. No. And why are you so wealthy? Well, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a general in the army. It's like the b lottery tickets. Coming out of your pants left and right. I can't help it. I, you I like scratch offs. To, uh, I like to play the games. Speaking of games, we gotta beat those Ruskies at the race to the moon. Oh, right. Okay, so coming out of the capsule, and then you want me to say something like, Moon time! Yeah, you know, just do one. Hello, Moon! Gregory, at some point, I want you to pretend that you got shot in the back of the head. <laughs> that seems strange. Now, is that gonna. It's Is that going to be weird for the audience, the, the American public, to see? It's going to be drama for the moon landing. Okay. And then what? I get up and I'm like, that was a close one. Yeah. Someone will drag your body off the set and then a new guy will step in there that doesn't know anything. Just go with it. Uh, I right. got that. The president's on the line. He wants to talk to you. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mr. President. Yeah. Hey, hey Greg, what's happening? Listen. You do me a solid and just do whatever the general says, okay? Because he's, he's like, he's standing in for me because I can't be there because uh, I can't afford to get mixed up in any kind of scandal. You know what I'm saying? Wink, wink. I guess I get it, but all right. So what do you want me to do? Where's What's my mark? Oh, yeah. We got to get those marks out of there. That's a dead giveaway. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Toby, maybe peel, to, to, uh, just, peel off this tape. We're just going to put a little bit of tape there. No, so no, Toby, don't do tape. Just do pebble. Do a little pebble. Oh, Can a you pebble. Just remember where a pebble yeah, is? Yeah, which pebble, which pebble, which pebble? The tape will show. The third pebble from the flag is going to be your mark. Third pebble from the flag. Hey, does anyone see that that flag is blowing in the wind? Is that, is that going to affect anybody? I need that fan on. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, I'm boiling alive in this astronaut costume. All right, all right. Let it go. All that right. astronaut costume is made out of the cowardly lion costume from uh, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah. They don't throw anything away. <laughs> It smells like Berlar in here. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mr. Kubrick, I have three ham sandwiches for you to look at for the Tum spot. <laughs> All right. I'll eat this one. No, you, Use that one as the hero. Okay. And let's get a hero in here. Okay. Hey, who got cast in that Tum spot? Beverly? No! She, I didn't even see her at the audition. <laughs> Hi, my name is Gregory Peck. I am with William Morris Agency, <laughs> and I'm reading for the role of... A uh, heartburn sufferer. <laughs> okay, Greg, you got yourself a tummy ache, okay? That's right. And then you eat the ham sandwich, it's, and then it's kind of like the uh, the the discomfort I felt when dealing with the racist society of the South in the Academy Award winning film To Kill a Mockingbird. Look, I got three other people out there, and uh, I got I got I got, I got a lot of time. I got no okay. time. I got no time to get you through. Okay. All right. I thought this would be an offer only situation. But no, no, no. <laughs> you got to eat the sandwich. I want you to do. You ever do a bite and chew? A bite and chew. <laughs> That's where you take a bite, and then you chew. Yeah, you got to chew it. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I've done it in life. I okay. don't know that I've done it. Hi there, Beverly checking in, queen of the bite and chews. <laughs> Beverly. I wanna, can I go in now? You could go right in. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. Uh, this is awkward because Gregory's still in here. <laughs> hey, what, what's going on? Oh, look, Mr. Gregory Peck thinks he's big stuff. He can go in and take work away from a working commercial actress. Well, sorry, Beverly, but I like to keep busy. <laughs> and this is how I exercise my instrument. Beverly uh, is here to show you how to do it, okay? Oh, is Mr. that so? <laughs> Mr. Peck, all right, go, show, go ahead. Uh, Beverly, eat the sandwich. You and, bite? And, I get chill. Look at that. You see that? That's that is a professional right there. All right, let me try. Get a lot of my bite and chew. 
Bite? Oh, it all spilled out of my mouth. We just saw it. We just saw you chew and spit. I didn't mean to even. That's weird. It's all right, Gregory. We can use you for this moon thing we got. Tell me more. (laughs) It sounds like you totally knew that Beverly was there. I hate the interview. (laughs) Listen, Greg, I know you'd rather be on that Tom spot over there, but try to stay focused on the moon spot. (laughs) All right. I promise you it's a bigger deal. I must have blocked it out or something. (laughs) Okay, so what's my line for uh, getting on the moon? What do I say? Just something that encapsulates the moment in history. How about, uh, why don't you say something like the president would say, like, uh, in your face, Ruskies. In your face, Ruskies. I mean, I think we could do better. That's a good placeholder for now. But there's got... (laughs) You disagree? (laughs) (laughs) You know how many people I've killed, uh, have died under my name? No. Lots. Lots and lots. So... I'm just saying. So that qualifies you to come up with a great line for standing on the moon. That just means that take my nut, take my line. You know How's uh, Vietnam going, General Powers? Touchy subject. We're getting some boom booms in the trees that we don't like. Oh, this is not going well. <coughs> oh, what is that stuff they're spraying? It's, I, it's, it's it. kind of orange. It's killing Ugh, me. Not having a great time. Yeah, this Look, is not- dude, just sit back and enjoy the music of Jimi Hendrix and the Jefferson Starship. <laughs> all right! Overall, it's doing all right. You know, no complaints. As long as they no, pipe in. No pipe- complaints! <laughs> <laughs> There's no one complaining about the war in Vietnam. There's a couple of people. We're, you know, come on. We got a job to do. I hear that. Okay, and we're rolling. All right, cue the thing. <laughs> I'd open the door. Open the door for Greg. Okay. Toby, you got everything lined up? He's a, he's an Oscar winner, General Powers. This is MOS, right? So I say it, but we'll dub it in later? You say it, but it should match. We want the head nod to match. The head he's nod, a okay. Great actor. But How you can can't I shoot him? You can't see my mouth, right? No. no. Okay, all Your right. Your sun shield's down. Here yeah. we go. You got to do it for America. All I wanted was to join the DGA. Stepping down the ladder. Good, yeah, walk it, talk Here it. Here we go. Take the shot. Take. Slow, All right, and hard. simultaneously, Beverly, I want you to eat that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Beverly. Oh, it's so good. Bite and oh. shoot, Beverly. Gregory, start walking. Oh, oh. take the Step shot. The oh, but acid indigestion. Giant steps are what I take. Take the <laughs> shot. <laughs> Die, Mr. Peck. Take that, Ross. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Oh. It's one small step for an A.D., a giant leap for mankind. (laughs) They killed Gregory Peck. I could use a Tums. You got that in the can? (laughs) Wait, the Tums is the size of the bullet hole. Maybe, just maybe, if we put a Tums in there, it'll remove the bullet. <laughs> That's right. These are the high quality tums that the general public doesn't know about. These are the Illuminati tums. <laughs> Somebody put a tums in my bullet hole. I gotta kill everybody on this set. <laughs> keep rolling on all this. All cameras keep rolling. <clears throat> well, we're ready for day one of The Shining. Uh, I know you've done a lot of work on it, Mr. Kubrick, and it, it's so great to work with you again. It's been a while. I had to take some time off. Hey, it's me, Jack Nicholson. What oh. you want me to do here? <laughs> hey, buddy. What do I just stand around looking crazy? <laughs> hey, pal. Well, you know best, Jack. I mean, your, your instincts are going to serve you well here. That's right. Mr. Kubrick, it's Marcy from uh, the costume department. Would you want Danny to wear this Mickey Mouse sweater or this sweater with the rocket launching to the moon? The Apollo 11 sweater. That's how I can tell the world. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, Jack, you don't need to worry about that. All right, back to doing cocaine, I guess. <laughs> and I'm ready to play the old lady in the bathtub. Hey, Beverly. Beverly. Good to see how you, you doing, you. Jack? Good to see you. Been a while. <laughs> Beverly, I'm glad we get to work together again. Yeah, I whatever. I haven't seen you since that Vlasic Pickles commercial <laughs> audition. I just beat you out for it, you scamp. <laughs> I sort of remember. 
Okay, uh, come on in. Uh, Jack Nicholson. Jack, yeah, nice me, to... Jack Nicholson. Okay, so you got your copy there. We're going to go right. on. Uh, you don't have to slate. We all know who you are. Oh, thank you. What am I like? I'm Gregory Pick or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so you got your copy? That's right. Okay, just look in the thing. Here uh, we go. Make way, make way what? for a real biter and chewer. <laughs> <laughs> what are these, kosher, dill, spicy? <laughs> Beverly, <Okay>. I'm out. <laughs> I didn't even bother to try. I mean, you're the queen of the bite and chew. That commercial got me insurance. <laughs> you, you're very sick, Beverly. What do, what do I got? It needs a lot of insurance, what you've got. Well, you, 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 how many tums did you eat? Did they give you a spit bucket on that set? They gave me one, but a real biter and chewer doesn't use a spit bucket. Those were special tums. You weren't supposed to eat that many. Well, I hate, I ate three bottles worth of them. Beverly, Beverly, good news. An audition has come in. She's too sick. I'm her doctor. I won't allow it. <laughs> Shut up, doctor. She's got to work. It's for the pickle company. The acid from that pickle could kill her with the state <laughs> her stomach's in. This could get you insurance. It's just one of those legendary Hollywood stories that everyone knows. I've told it on the Mike Douglas show many times. Anyway, I, I, know, I, I know my scene's not until four months into the shoot, but I just wanted to say hi. Well, it's good you for get, everybody to get to know each other before we work together. Get in makeup now. What? Yes. Who's this guy? It's me, the general. General Tim E. Powers. Thank you. Wait, Tim E. Powers? Tim... Capital E. Right. Powers. So it's all, I'm like, yeah, I'm picturing it in my mind, and it looks like time oh. powers. Is that right? I can go back in time. <laughs> and forward in time, too. I can dance around time. Look, you don't hear any of this, though, or I have to kill you. And Jack, I like your work, so I don't want to kill you. Thank you. Did you see five easy pieces? Yeah, I like that thing with the sandwich. Yeah, hold it between your knees. That was fun, right? That was nice. Don't do any bad movies, okay? No, I promise. Oh, that movie made me so hungry. <laughs> I promise I'll never do a bad movie. That's what I want to hear. Now, Stanley, we meet again. That's right. So what are you doing here? So uh, <laughs> Confirm. As I was dancing around in time, I heard you wanted to tip the scale a little bit. Put some... What do you call them, Easter eggs in here? Well, I'm going to tell you what for. Yeah, I changed it. <laughs> you think I'm not jealous of you because you're always staying the same age? Yeah. And I'm getting 78. older. 78. <laughs> it got to me a little late. I couldn't uh, couldn't dial it down. I could just move in time. I can't change my own age. It's Look, General. Huh? You've interfered with the movie business enough. Yes, a lot. Isn't it terrible enough that for the past 11 years, America's had a fake Gregory Peck? Because of the real one that you made me kill there at the Paramount Studio? And now you're here to interfere with a real artist's real movie. That's uh, all. He did it to Barry Lyndon, too, and I didn't mind. Well, Barry Lyndon had some troubles. Uh, I tried to help him. You ruined it. The, what? It was exciting until you got involved. It was boring, yes. The government's version was boring. Don't you know that movies are meant to, to communicate to uh, other life forms? What? Uh, <laughs> why do I say so much? <laughs> Listen, you really are spilling the beans all over. <laughs> I can't place. help it. I got a loose lips. So I sunk a couple ships too in my tea. You know, fool me once and all that. But listen, I want to. <laughs> now make... you're just saying expressions. <laughs> oh, no, that was an expression that pertained to what I did. I, you know, I, I won't do it again, is what I'm saying. The stitching time saves time. Look, mistakes are made and people die, but that doesn't mean we learn from them. Okay? Yeah. Right. As long as we're on an agreement with that, then we're going to make some more mistakes. Okay, mistakes are made, people die. But we got to learn from it. No, we no, don't we learn don't. from it. As long as no. we don't learn from it. As long as we don't learn from them, the status quo remains status. That makes a certain you kind see, of sense. We don't want to change things because we're on top. You mind if I cut in here, Mr. President? Or uh, Mr. I'm Mr. President. I'm talking to myself because uh, I'm going to be president in the future. Uh, Mr. General. Oh, that's right. We're running you in 2016, right? <laughs> yeah, that's this right. Guy? Hey, how you doing, guys? Donald Trump. Uh, 
You know, we found I know you guys are a bunch of known losers, but uh, look, this movie you're about to make is going to be pretty important to the 2016 election, okay? So uh, do it right and do it the way that this guy says, okay? Now I got to go back to the future. Whoa, whoa. Bet you never thought we'd run an orange guy. He looks like a feces. Just a single one? Just a single one. Yeah. Was that, was that conversation on mic or was it? I've been recording all of this. I can't remember. This. We're going to use everything that has just been said and done. This is perfect. I don't even want to get Shelly Duvall in here. We have it with yeah. everything that just went Yeah, down. we need Shelly Duvall. She's, she's <laughs> part of this project. It's in her contract. And I know she's pretty high up in the government. She's got uh, some strong uh, government lawyers, so you don't want to mess with old Shirley. Shelly? Shelly, Whatever. I believe. Look, I don't know the actors. I just know what the president wants. He wants mums the word. So if you do anything, make sure it's a very convoluted underground plot to unveil some of this truth. Oh, and here's that red rum you asked for. Thank you. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> that was good. Now, uh, I'm going to give you a boy, okay? You're never going to see him again. Take the boy, make him do his things, and then there's a couple of twin girls, too. They're, they're Why don't you take over, General? I've had enough directing. I'd like to see you finish a film. What? Right. So there he goes. Stanley walked off the stop, picture. Stop, 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 stop. All right. And he said, stop, stop, stop on his way out. The twin girls represent the Twin Towers. Now, you don't know what those are. Yeah, the World Trade Center. Are they built at this point? Yeah. This is 1980. World. Oh, yeah, yeah. They was in that remake of King Kong. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Remember the poster? You know, when you bounce around a lot in time, you forget where you are and what's I, going on. I bet that's true. Oh, boy, I'm late for so many things. <laughs> How ironic. Oh, yes, it is pretty ironic. And I can't even come back. Yeah, look, time travel is not easy. It's very lonely, actually, because I go farther in time than anybody else. And guess what's at the end of time? Nobody, just me, floating around in black space. Have you ever thought about having a sort of companion travel with you? Maybe like a younger person? I was going to bring my wife around, but... Uh, no, but that's weird. She never lets me drive, so... <laughs> I left her... I think it should be someone that's like, you know, 20 years younger than you. Maybe like a young girl or a young boy. What, you think I'm a pervert? No, no, it's a, you have a totally platonic relationship. <laughs> no, not where my mind went. In fact, like, you never, you never have any sort of romantic leanings whatsoever. Except later, maybe, like, they'll try to, you try to mix things up a little bit, but it's hmm. not well received. Well, I guess we could try that route. Sure. <laughs> Anybody want to go time traveling with me? Hey, how about you, little boy from The Shining? Sure thing, mister. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> And it all happened at a place called the Moon Landing Taping, 1969. Hey everyone, it's Paul from the future, and I am interrupting the wind down of the episode to let you know that that weird staticky sound that you heard in the second half of the improv that no one acknowledged, that was the sound of Earwolf's soundboard shorting itself out to death. Uh, that board just fried and it took our sound effects board with it. And then we all picked up and we moved into the other Earwolf studio. Eben dragged his keyboard in there and everything. And so without sound effects, we finished the rest of the episode. Uh, and I wanted to tell you now because I didn't want you listening for it um, as you listen to the episode. And uh, now the story can be told. An interesting bit of spontaneation trivia. And now back to the end of the episode. Craig Kakowski, where can people find you online? Oh, uh, at Kakowski on Twitter. I like C the way you say your own name. <laughs> at Kakowski. At Kakowski on Twitter. C Kakowski on Instagram, where I mostly just like things. Now, you did you have to be C Kakowski because your wife claimed Kakowski on Instagram? She is Carla Kakowski on Instagram. Did your sister claim Kakowski on Instagram? I don't think she was on it. I don't know. Who got it? Nobody. I, I guess you just added the same. I think NBC's Natalie Morales is Craig Kakowski <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> 
And Craig, is there anything we are now? It's it's Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving's coming up. Do you have anything you'd like to promote? Hey, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, you can see me play Scrooge and Twist Your Dickens at Portland Center Stage for the entire month of December. Is that true? That is totally true. Yes. Oh, I want to see that. It's a sketch comedy version written by the Second City version of The Christmas Carol. And I play Ebenezer Scrooge, who I'm told is one of the major characters. <laughs> I think you'll be pleased when you see the amount of lines you have. Great. Uh, Rich Tellerico, where can people find you online? Well, if they would enter richtellerico.com into Google and then press play. <laughs> you can cut out some steps. <laughs> press play. <laughs> you would find my website, which is under construction. Always. As of, as of this recording, it's still I, under I, construction. I so. I'm, I'm kind of working on it right now. All right. Are you on Twitter? Yes, Rich Tellerico. That's helpful. Yes. Thank you. Instagram? Yes, but I have only posted like eight things, so I don't want to. Okay. Let's avoid that one. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, put that out of your mind. Don't go around Instagram looking don't for do old it. Rich Tellerico. Because <laughs> you're not going to find nothing <laughs> worth finding. <laughs> and that's what's for. Bob Dassey, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, well, you can do uh, uh, Word Ass Improv, which is uh, the. Uh, the, the um, uh, what would you call it? I guess the performance that uh, my wife and I do together. That's right. Your wife's Stephanie that. Weir. My wife is Stephanie Weir. And we, An amazingly talented person. See, we combined our last names and uh, we're... Uh, anyway, so Weird Ass Improv <laughs> is uh, where you can see my random and unoccasional uh, tweets. All right. <laughs> Is there any is there any uh, shows you'd like to promote or anything like that? You know, one thing that is, if if all is uh, uh, going well, um, the, I mean, who knows? But if if, if things don't, I have a guest spot on the grid. Uh, if if things don't end, <laughs> <laughs> if things don't end before this thing airs, uh, you mean uh, like the world? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you were talking about dying. I'm worried about the whole world. That's true. Okay. Oh, well, you got yeah. You, yeah. You, you've you've trumped me on this. One. Well, I don't mean to. It's just all teetering, and if you look at it really closely, we're screwed. That's true. Anyway, uh, if it doesn't go off the axis and we don't go hurling into space, then uh, in uh, December we're working on uh, doing our show uh, "Stolen House" in New York, mm -hmm. and this is a show with um, uh, my uh, myself and Stephanie Weir and uh, uh, Scott Adsit, John Lutz. Wow, uh, Dave uh, uh, Pasquese and T.J. Jagodowski. Um, Holy moly! And it's a, an improvised play. It's a two-act improvised play. And what we do is we go into an existing uh, theater, uh, existing a uh, theater with an existing set. There it is. Okay. Uh, a theater with an existing set, and then we uh, perform a two-act play with their set. Wow. And that's called uh, Stolen House. We and under the watchful eyes of someone from that play, <laughs> making <laughs> yeah. sure oh, exactly. you don't break any of their shit. Oh, believe me. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's that. I love that idea, and that cast is unbelievable. That sounds very exciting. It's a it's a good time. Do you know? But you don't know yet where you will be. No, and uh, uh, what we're planning is to do four different shows in New York at four wow. different theaters. So it's ambitious. We did a run in Chicago at one theater, which was awesome. Uh, we just had a great time there. So we're going to try uh, mixing it up a little bit in New York. Beautiful. Stolen House. So look for Stolen House. And uh, all of those names, and you will find out where it is happening. Yeah, and you actually can do Stolen House Play on Twitter. Stolen House Play on Twitter! There you go. Follow it. Get the updates. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, also, Craig, uh, for that Screwed show, same thing if uh, the Earth doesn't end? Yeah, I... That's always uh, granted. We should have we should have things in the future. If well, the world okay, from from here on out, yeah. from here on out, please keep in mind all of these plugs. They are only in effect <laughs> if the world does not end. All right. Yeah. I'm glad we sorted that out. Evan Schletter, you can find him at evanschletter.com. He has Evan Schletter on Twitter, and you should go to Evan Schletter's website and you should buy his albums because Evan Schletter is only the best. What would I like to plug? Well. All sorts of things. <sighs> How about this? Uh, Spontaneous Nation Live happens again at Largo at the Coronet, Saturday, December 3rd. Uh, that is going to be a wonderful show with proceeds going to Habitat for Humanity. Uh, our improvisers are Annie Savage, Hal Lublin, and Janet Varney. And our special guest will be Ron Funches. That is going to be a great show. I'd be surprised if it weren't. Um... Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in 
Presenty! They tricked me. Earwolf did a prank on me. Hi, I'm Sean Clements. I do Hollywood Handbook. I'm one of the two hosts. And Hayes Davenport is probably the host you would like better, but I'm who's here today. Anyway, I made a promise to anyone who listened to one of these little inserts that they would not attach a clip of Hollywood Handbook because, of course, I think that it's actually kind of filthy and dirty for Earwolf to just take someone who is trying to listen to one show and force them to listen to a piece of another show. I just don't think that's... I didn't want them to put a clip in. I guess what I've learned is they did attach a clip and that I guess it was super funny and it made people want to check out the show because they picked like a really great part from one of our episodes. I wish they hadn't done that. They've promised to let me come in, correct the mistake by just saying we're never doing it again. And now when I stop talking, you're not going to hear a clip from Hollywood Handbook. You're just going to go either back to your show or you go listen to something else. If you decide to check us out because it's what you want, that's fine, but you're not not going to get forced to listen to us. Bye. Laos is where Sriracha comes from, which is something that a lot of people haven't heard of yet, but I go wild for that stuff. I put it in oatmeal. I put it on hot I'll dogs. I'll put it on eggs. I put it I put it in uh cherry pie. I put it on on a fish. And I literally will eat it. Eat the eat whole it thing after I've. And I will eat the whole thing after I put sriracha. <laughs> <laughs> after I put sriracha on it. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 